Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Middle School Math Survival Guide. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi, welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. Today is the 6th grade mathematics pre-assessment video 3 of 3. And this is something that I should have said beforehand is this is pre-assessment is to get you ready to go into class and to take something like this. So I highly recommend is that you watch the video, look at the problem, pause the video, see if you can come up with a solution and then see how I do it. Number 1, complete the statement with a lesson because it's less at the beginning, greater than, greater is at the beginning, so it's open, or equals. So we're looking at, and we're going to evaluate each one here. We have to put something in the middle here for each one. So here we go, 6.78, 6.38. Well, we have 6.7, 6.7, and then right here, we have that 3, and I'm going to draw a line here with an 8. So this is definitely greater. So 78 hundredths is greater than 73 hundredths. So I would put this symbol here. Let's look at B, 9.11 and 9.12. Well, uh, this is less than that, so less than. Now, as a teacher, I've seen this before where students just, they just put this here real quick. They just go boom, boom, because it's they're not reading the entire number. 3.08 or 3 and eight hundredths is actually less than 3.8 or 3 and 8 tenths. Then here's another one here where D 5.1 and 5.10. And I'm like, well, 10 is greater than 1, right? Well, not necessarily because I can, because 5.1 is also equal to 5.10 because. There's one tenths and zero hundredths. And same thing here, one tenths and zero hundredths. So that's going to be equal. That's where you can use that equal sign. Let's look at number two with rounding. So now I just want to do just a real quick review. So if it's zero to four, you're going to round down. Okay, just remember that. And if it's five plus, or you could just say to nine, you're going to round up. What does that mean? Well, we're going to say, let's evaluate each one. It says here, round each number to the given place value. Round it 0 0.6948 or 6,948 ten thousandths to the nearest hundredth. Well, where's the, where's the hundredth? So right here, we have tens and hundreds. So this is the hundredth, okay? And we look to the number immediately to the right. So we're only evaluating this number here, which is four. Now, some people go, wait a minute, aren't you supposed to round this up to this? No, we're evaluating it from the number immediately to the right of the target place value. Four right here, we're rounding down, but it stays the same. So when I say that, so it's zero point six, nine, we do not change this number, but 0 0.69 is less than 0 0.6948 because we don't have that extra 48 there. That's what they mean by rounding down. Let's evaluate B here, 12.034 or 34 thousandths. Let's take a look here to the nearest tenth. Well, the nearest tenth is going to be right here. That's my layer's tenth. We're going to look to that number immediately to the right, which is three. Okay, we're rounding down. So again, our number is going to be 12.0. And notice how I wrote out the entire number. So there are folks, hey, wait a minute. If there's other numbers to the left, you have to write those numbers down as well. Evaluate C. Round 694.8 or 694 and 8 tenths to the nearest hundred. Oh. 100? Wait a minute, what does that mean? Well, this is a tenth, this is a one, a ten, and a hundred. So we're looking here, we're going to look to the number immediately to the right, which is nine. So this is going to be 700. So we're rounding up because here, five plus, so if it was six, five, we'd round up. Six, 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 seven, six, eight, six, nine. We go up to, to the next higher hundred. Round 120 point three four or one hundred and twenty and thirty four hundredths to the nearest ten. So we have ten right here. 
Again, we're going to look to the right, which is 0, so it's just going to be 120. Now, you could here, you could add that 0, 0, .0 or and then here 0, 0. It's still the same. Some teachers may say, hey, if you have a decimal point, I want you to round it out there too. That's okay, but this is what's acceptable to me right here, just putting down that 120. Order of operations, if you remember that, please excuse my dear D, Aunt Sally. So this is parentheses, that's where you have this. Exponents, where you have something raised to a power. This is multiplication, so times, division, addition, and subtraction. Now, one thing you need to remember is that these right here, this multiplication division, they're at the same level. So it's not do multiplication first and then division. It's at the same level, so you go work your way from left to right with that same thing for addition and subtraction. So let's evaluate this. Number three, simplify the expression, then find the answer. This is our expression. What we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. So what do we do first? Wait a minute. It has division in there. Do we do that first? But wait, it has parentheses. So we're going to rewrite this out as 48 divided by, and then it's 2 plus 6. What is that? So 2 plus 6 is 8. So I can put 8 here, or I could have the parentheses, however you want to do it. But that's going to be the same thing. So 48 divided by 8. I can, if you need, still need to do this, 48 divided by 8. And we know that 6 times 8 is 48. So that's going to be equal to 6. Remember, you need to know those factors for your multiplication to be able to understand how to get the answers for division quickly. And number four, simplify the expression, then find the answer as an exponent. So this is a little bit different. It says I have to simplify, then find the answer. So this is number one, number two, and then I have to write it as an exponent. There's three pieces to this. Parentheses, there's no parentheses. Exponents, there's no exponents. But let's see, I have multiplication. So I'm going to do the multiplication. So 45 minus, and it's 3 times 12, and that's going to be 36, and that equals what? Now, you can go over here and go 45 and 36 and subtract that if you need to. That's going to be 3, there's 15 minus 6, that's going to be 9, and it's just going to be 9. But an easier way to do it is to go, wait a minute, 45, uh, we can add 36 to each side and have 36 over here, no, wait a minute, what can we do to get to that 36? That's going to be 45 minus 9 is equal to 36. Okay, so this is number one. And so, so we did this, so we simplified it. That was number step number one. Number two, find an answer. Okay, that's number two. And then show this as an exponent, so that's equal to 9, which is also equal to 3 squared because 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So you need to understand your multiplication tables there and understand how to create an exponent. Last few are going to be word problems. When you enter into sixth grade and go up in higher grades, there's going to be a lot more word problems and most of them are going to be multiple steps. Angelique has 11 and 2 thirds cups of milk. She needs 1 and 2 thirds cups of milk to make a pot of hot chocolate. After making two pots of hot chocolate, how much milk will be left? She has, this is what she has, 11 and 2 third cups of milk. That's what she has right now. She needs 1 and 2 thirds cups of milk to make a pot. So for each pot, this is for each pot. That's, I'm just going to put each. E -A, I'm going to do E-A, so each pot. After making two pots, how much milk is left? All we need to do is just go, well, wait a minute, we need two times one and two-thirds, okay, cups. And what does that equal to? Best thing to do is go, wait a minute, I can say two over one, which is equal to that two times, and I have to make, instead of having a mixed fraction here, I'm going to do, create an improper fraction. So one is equal to thirds is three over three. I know that because three divided by three is equal to one. And I just add that to the top there. So I go, okay, so 3 plus 2 is 5 and thirds. 
and then I can just multiply that out. That is equal to 2 times 5 is 10. Following me here? Thirds and 10 thirds. And we're going to take that out and go, well, I know that 3, okay, you see what I'm doing here? So 3 thirds is equal to 1 cut, or 1. So 10 minus 3 is still 7. Minus 3 is going to be 4. Minus 3. So it's like, well, wait a minute. That means I'm going to have 3, right? And 3 times 3 is 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. So 3 and 1 thirds. So that's how much milk I've used, that, that I've rather Angelique has used. Milk, I'm going to say M used. Okay, for two, for two pots of hot chocolate. But we're looking for this here. This is that last step. This is that step. How much milk will be left? So I have 11 and two thirds minus three and one third. And that's going to give me, so two thirds minus one third is going to be one third. 11 minus three is eight. So I would have to write eight and one third cups of milk left. This is the answer. If you circle this as the answer, now if this was, well, let's say it was a three point problem, I'd say you got two points. You have to get this here, eight and one third cups of milk or left or left. Something like this. If I said write it in a complete sentence, you'd have to write it in a complete sentence. But since I didn't up here, then this is acceptable right here because you actually put in the units as well as how much milk left. Number six, Rigo has five people in his family. Their cell phone plan includes 499 minutes free each month. If the minutes are split equally among each family member, how many minutes does each person get to talk on the phone? Then it says, how many minutes can be rolled over to the next billing period? This is telling me that there's going to be a remainder of minutes. So let's reread it. Rigo has five people in his family. So we know there's five people. Their plan includes 499 minutes each month. If the minutes are split equally on each family member, how many minutes does person, each person get to talk on the phone? Okay, so we need to know that. So we have to write that out. And then it says, how many minutes are rolled over? So that's telling me that there's a, again, there's a remainder because let's take a look. So if I have 499 minutes and I'm going to split it equally between each family member and there's five family members and see how I did that? I have 499 and I'm equally dividing it or splitting it. See how those words, I'm using that academic language and also I'm, I'm saying, hey, you have to, the vocabulary and understanding and the comprehension of what all that means. So four divided by five, I can't do it. So there's zero there. 49 is close to 50. And I know that five times 10 is 50, but I can't put that there. So it probably have to be, what do you think? Five times nine, five times nine is gonna give us 45, remember that. And I'm gonna subtract. And again, I'm going to have 49 again. So repeat it there, 45, 49 minus 45, and I'm going to have four minutes. Okay, so I can put here each, I'm just going to abbreviate each. I'm going to say FM family member will have 99 minutes. And I'm just going to just abbreviate that as well minutes put a little period there but it says how many minutes can be rolled over to the next billing period now he's right and four minutes and four minutes can be rolled over next more word problems number seven a juice recipe calls for five cups of grape juice for every two cups of peach juice how many cups of grape juice are needed for a batch that uses eight cups of peach juice create a double number line with cups of grape juice on the top and cups of peach juice on the bottom to show the ratio 
of grape juice to peach juice. So I'm not writing out an answer like in sentences here. What I'm doing is I need to create this double number line. But let's go back through and, and reread this again so we can highlight the information that we have and what we're trying to find. A juice recipe calls for five cups of grape juice for every two cups of peach juice. How many? So this is what it's asking for. This is the answer that it's looking for. How many cups of grape juice are needed for a batch that uses eight cups of peach juice? So how many cups of grape juice uses eight cups of peach juice? And then it reads, create a doubled number line with cups of grape juice on top and cups of peach juice on the bottom to show the ratio of grape juice to peach juice. Double number line. And if I do this here, I can say this is zero. So there's nothing there. But wait, it says here, five cups of grape juice for every two cups of peach juice. But it says, create a double number line with grape juice on the top. So this is gonna be grape juice. And this is must be peach juice. If I come over here and I say, okay, this is two cups of peach juice. How many cups of grape juice? Well, I have five cups up here, five cups. See how we're doing this? Okay, two, let's go to four. Okay, so four cups. So I double this, that means I have to double that. So it's gonna be 10 cups. See where we're going? Two, four, six cups. But wait a minute, I'm not doubling it. If I say, well, this is triple it, so Five times three is 15 cups, right? And then here I'm doubling it. So uh, doubling this one right here, so eight cups. And that's gonna be two times 10, that's 20 cups of grape juice. But wait, this is eight cups of peach juice and 20 cups, so I can draw my circle right here. And that would be the answer. That's all they were asking for. There was no math required. Well, I want to say, yes, there was some math required. But here, all I had to do is just add two, four, six. Number eight, on a bicycle, you can travel 20 miles in four hours. At the same rate, what distance can you travel in one hour? We're looking at, right here, it says same rate. Let's reread this. On a bicycle, you can travel 20 miles in four hours. So we can say 20 miles per four hours at the same rate. What distance can you travel in one hour? Again, I'm doing 20 miles in four hours. And it's the same rate. I'm, they're going, well, wait a minute. I want to, I'm going to put an H here just for hours and M here. Just have those units there. So 20 miles in four hours. But what about in one hour? And we have this unknown. So I'm just going to call that A. And to find out what this is, I need to find out what the miles are, right? So how many miles, that's gonna be my distance, that's in miles. Well, what we do here, we're gonna cross multiply here and cross multiply here. 4a, 4a is equal to 20. See, I, I took those units out, it just makes it a little bit simpler here. So. Now I'm trying to find A. So I'm going to divide each side by four. And that's gonna give me A is equal to, and what's 20 divided by four? Or rather, what is four times something that equals to 20? Well, four times five, so five fours. So five times four is equal to 20. Now let's just do that. So it's five times four, that's equal to 20 divided by four. Boom, like that. So there we go. So it's five. So A is equal to five. So I would say we can go five miles in one hour. There we go. Easy peasy. If you need to have some practice on how to solve some of this stuff, whether it's multiplication, grouping, division, whatever, on trying to help you bring yourself up to be able to answer these questions, go to this YouTube channel. This is where I have my practice for kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, share, and subscribe to Mr. Woods Teaches and also watch me correct my mistakes on TikTok. I may have something to put up there from this video as well. You can see it there at Mr. Woods Teaches on TikTok. Have a great day.